Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel and today I want to show you guys Electrobyte version 2, my brand new $400 gaming PC designed for 2019. So I want to start off this PC build video by saying that this isn't the fastest $400 gaming PC you can build right now, but I believe it's the smartest one. Everything chosen inside this PC is designed to be upgradable or have some sort of future-proof ability to it to where if you don't have a bunch of money for a gaming PC right away, Electrobyte version 2 might be something to look at because for $400 you can get like a little taste of what it's like to get into PC gaming You kind of have an idea of what PC games you want to play as well as what settings and at what resolutions So that if you save more money later on down the road You can kind of have an idea of what sort of graphics card you want Get that slap it inside this PC and then have an even better gaming experience Which will only cost you $400 so in essence what I'm about to show you guys, I think is a really awesome starter gaming PC. So today I'll be showing you guys the part selection for Electra by version two, as well as the future upgrade options. If you have an extra $50 or $100 to spend, as well as gaming benchmarks, which this time we have Rust. I, I made sure I read the comment section. You guys wanted that, so I did that. As well as streaming benchmarks, which were actually kind of surprising. And then closing out this video with the pros and cons over Electrobyte version two. And then next week, I'll have a tutorial video on how to build this PC, as well as a general overall how to build a gaming PC video for Intel and AMD systems, as well as a setup video that also includes Electrobyte version two for a certain price and it kind of emphasizes its strengths for certain PC gaming setups. So I'll have a setup video and a tutorial video coming out next week. So if you want those videos in your sub box, then click that little subscribe button down below. So to all of you who are watching this video, I wanna give a thank you to all of you who support and watch these PC build videos that I make. Not only are they just, you know, really rewarding to make in general, but to be real with you guys, it's a really awesome joy when you guys send me your completed builds that I've actually, you know, made online for you guys through Instagram or Discord. And you're like, yo, I made your $500 gaming PC, check it out. And it's the exact same thing that I made in video for you guys. And it's just so, it's so rewarding when I see that and it's just such a cool thing because gaming PCs can truly offer really unforgettable gaming experiences, not just with yourself, but also with your friends. So it's just a really awesome thing to see that you guys are using my builds to get into such a really cool realm of gaming. So just another big thank you to all of you who support and watch my build videos. So let's get right into the parts list of this $400 gaming PC, which real quick, all the parts you're about to see will be linked in the description down below if you want to check them out and see where they're priced at right now. Starting off with the processor, I've chosen the AMD Ryzen 3400G. This is an APU, which means that it's consistent of a CPU and a GPU and one chip, which explains why there isn't a graphics card inside of the system right now, because technically there's a built-in graphics card inside that chip that's powerful enough to run games at 1080p. So the CPU portion of the 3400G has four cores, eight threads, it's clocked at 3.7 gigahertz, and it's overclockable. And the GPU portion of the 3400G, which is referred to as Vega 11 graphics, is also overclockable and is clocked at 1400 megahertz. Now, one important thing to note is that since there isn't a dedicated graphics card inside the system, to connect this computer to a monitor, you're gonna have to use the HDMI port at the back of the PC on the motherboard IO, which isn't an issue if you're gonna be using one monitor, but if you're gonna have multiple, I would suggest going ahead and getting a dedicated graphics card. But if you aren't, like if you're uh, you know, building this PC for the first time, you're gonna be all right. Next for the motherboard, I would like for you to choose any MSI B450 Max motherboard of your choice. So in the build video right now, I'm using the B450 Gaming Plus Max, but on Amazon, you can get the MSI Pro M2 Max 
for $75, which is an awesome price because these Mac series of MSI motherboards already have support for Ryzen third gen processors. So you don't have to BIOS update them, which is super awesome. And from what I know, they're the only motherboards that are B450 and can support third gen Ryzen processors out of the box. So I would stick it to those, which those are linked in the description too. And of course, since they're B450, they can't allow for overclocking on the CPU and GPU portion of the 3400G if you want more performance. Next for the RAM, I have eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3000 megahertz. I'm gonna leave the brand name out of it because technically as long as you choose an eight gigabyte dual channel set that is clocked at 3000 megahertz, the brand name does not matter because it doesn't affect the RAM quality to an extent. So as long as you get dual channel 3000 megahertz, eight gigabytes, you're pretty much good. But I'm choosing the higher speed because the higher frequency of the RAM works really well with Ryzen processors like the 3400G, like what I always preach in my build videos. So I would stick with that if you want more performance out of the box. But one other important thing to know is that since the graphics card is built into the processor, it doesn't have its own dedicated pool of memory to work with. So it's gonna have to use the RAM, which you can use up to two gigabytes of allocation for, which is kind of acting as like it's VRAM for it. But if you use up to two gigabytes, which is the max amount, just know that you will have six gigabytes left of memory for gaming, which as you'll see from the gaming benchmarks actually wasn't that big of a deal. Next for the storage, I have 500 gigabytes of SSC storage from Inland. Now, 500 gigabytes, I think is a really good spot, especially for a $400 gaming PC, because it's gonna offer enough storage to where you can store your favorite games on it, as long as they aren't super huge. But again, they're about like $50 in terms of SSD price, so you're getting a pretty awesome value, I think. So as long as you stay away from games like Black Ops 4 or Forza Horizon 4, or maybe the upcoming Halo Infinite, because those installs could be like 75 gigabytes each, you'll be all right, because most popular games like Fortnite and PUBG are about 13 to 23 gigabytes of storage. So as long as you moderate what games you install on the 500 gigabyte SSD, you will be fine in terms of overall memory storage. And now for the power supply, I have something a little different. I've gone a little bit future-proof in terms of my choice. I have an EVGA 600B 80 plus bronze power supply. Now the reason why I'm choosing a 600 watt power supply for a system that realistically only needs about 400 watts is again for future-proofing. Just so in the case that you decide to upgrade to a dedicated graphics card like this, you are gonna need more wattage. So having that extra 200 watts already there for you to work with, it's just gonna not only alleviate the need for a better and newer power supply, say if you were to get like a 400 watt one, but I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, technically saving you like an extra 40 bucks. So I went with a 600 watt just to include any sort of future graphics card. And finishing up for the case, I've chosen the Deep Cool Matrix 50 ATX Mid Tower. A ton of you guys love the Matrix 55 from my $500 Spectre gaming PC. And recently Deepcool just made a brand new revision of that case that actually has an included fan at the back, whereas the 55 didn't have any included fans, which was kind of a problem. This one does fortunately, but it's $5 cheaper at 40 bucks. So it's an awesome budget case. It looks super sick. It's got tempered glass panel, a plexiglass front, PSU shroud, and a really clean interior for $40, which is kind of unbelievable, but it's a case and we're going with it. So that brings the total price of this gaming PC to $405 as of September of 2019. Now for you guys wondering about the fans, because I do have those included, those are only there for aesthetical reasons. I found the actual cooling difference between having those included and not was about 10 degrees Celsius when the CPU was at 100% load, which for gaming, that's never gonna happen because games don't utilize 100% of the CPU most of the time. So those are only there for aesthetical reasons and just for looks. So if you want fans, you can get some, but they aren't required because that stock fan at the back of the PC will do just enough. So say you have an extra 50 or $100, what can you use that extra money for to make this PC better? So if you have $50, the first thing that I would do is that I would upgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes for an extra 20 to $25 with your brand and speed of choice. But you know, preferred to be around 3000 megahertz. This is gonna allow for more storage because again, with the APU, there's no actual VRAM for the graphics card portion of the chip. So it's gonna use the system memory for that. So if you have more system memory and you use up the two gigabytes for the max allocation for that 3400G, I know this sounds super technical, but just go with me. 
you'll have 14 gigabytes of spare memory free rather than six if you were to go with eight. And 14 is better than six in a lot of ways. So if you want just more memory, so you can have possibly better frames per second, so you can have six over 14, then I, that would be an upgrade I'd recommend looking at. And for the remaining 20 to $25, I would spend that money on getting a higher quality 600 watt power supply that's 80 plus gold, or if you get a really good deal, 80 plus platinum. So that way you can have a longer lasting power supply with like a five or seven year warranty. And for an extra $100, I would go ahead and include the previous upgrades that I just mentioned, but use the remaining $50 for a one terabyte SSD. That way you'll have no worries whatsoever as far as storage for whatever games you're gonna be loading up on this PC however many years from now, because one terabyte I think is gonna be enough to store all of your games as well as any sort of videos, images, documents, school stuff, you name it. One terabyte should be enough for a long time. And now we've made it to the best part of the video according to you guys, the gaming and streaming benchmarks. Now, before I begin, I want to mention that the RAM was overclocked to 2933 MHz through the BIOS using the onboard XMP profile setting. Now, I did this because one, to take advantage of the 3000 MHz cap offered by the RAM because more MHz means more frames per second when it comes to RAM and Ryzen processors. And also, I went ahead and enabled auto overclocking on Ryzen Master, which is an application you can download from online, which is kind of an easy way to overclock your Ryzen processor if you wanted to, especially since auto overclocking does it for you automatically, which again was done pretty well with the stock cooler, because I just wanna show you guys the most frames per second possible with this PC, because again, it's not the fastest, but there's tweaks you can do to make it just a little bit faster if you want just a bit better of a PC gaming experience. So with that all out of the way, let's get right into the benchmarks.
So those were the gaming and streaming benchmarks. And now let's get into the final closing pros and cons of Electrobyte version two. So the major pro with going with a PC like this with an all-in-one processor is that the future proofing and upgrade paths possible with Electrobyte version two are really awesome, all the way from the graphics card to the RAM to the processor. Because again, we're working with the AM4 socket, which means if you wanted to, you could upgrade to like a Ryzen 3600, a Ryzen 3700X, or if you were really crazy, a 3950X, because that is all on the AM4 socket. And of course, you wouldn't need to apply any BIOS updates since the motherboard you've chosen already is gonna be BIOS updated out of the box. And for the GPU, I just for the heck of it slapped in actually an AMD Navi RX 5700, which is pretty overkill for a system like this. But looking at these initial benchmarks on Forza Horizon 4 and Fortnite, you can see that the frames per second at a higher graphical setting at 1080p just shot up a ton. So that just goes to show it's, it's probably preferred to like start off with an AP like this just to see what games you like on PC and see what performance you need. So that way you can get the correct graphics card for that needed performance. So you can truly have a full on PC gaming experience, which in this case, even with an RX 5700, your experience is gonna be boosted a ton. So again, like I said at the beginning of the video with this in mind, you can save up for $400 start off with a PC like this, and then later on, like six months down the road, when your birthday hits or Christmas money hits, you can go ahead and put in a full on dedicated graphics card and truly become a member of the PC master race. And one final pro I wanna mention is that this PC is dead silent because if you don't put in a graphics card, the sound output from a processor like that in a system of that caliber is gonna be non-existent, even with the included fans. But now the cons. And again, like I said at the very beginning of the video, this technically isn't the fastest gaming PC you can build for $400. And it shows because for the most part, it can game a lot of PC games at a decent setting at 1080p and get about 60 frames per second. But when you get up there, to those more higher end triple A titles like Forza or terribly optimized games like Rust, this PC just doesn't have enough manpower to run those games. And it shows because it's using an integrated graphics card on one chip. But with that being said though, games like League of Legends, Fortnite and Minecraft were an absolute breeze on this PC because those are just so well optimized for mid end to low end PCs like this. So if you're really into getting to like esports titles like CSGO, maybe a little bit of PUBG, Fortnite, those sort of stuff that's really easy to run, then this PC is gonna have no problem. But if you wanted to run like Cyberpunk 2077 or Borderlands 3, it's not gonna happen. You need a dedicated graphics card for that. Or you can just run those games at 720p rather than 1080p and you might have a chance. And finally, this PC can kind of stream and I'm actually surprised that it streamed League of Legends at 1080p at 6,000 kilobits per second, but it couldn't stream Fortnite. So that just goes to show that even those easy to run esports titles that this PC can manage at about like 60 frames per second are downgraded further when it comes to streaming because you don't have like a dedicated graphics card that can offload the offset of streaming on the processor at the same time. But when it comes to potato games like League of Legends or Minecraft, those are so easy to run that Electrobyte version 2 can still stream those games at 1080p 60 frames per second, despite the actual load it would require to stream and game at the same time. So this PC can stream, but it can only stream potato level PC games. And with all of that being said, that is the $400 gaming PC build guide video for 2019. And if you enjoy this build guide, most definitely subscribe to the Scatterbolt channel because I'm always here to give you guys those really cool build guides and see what sort of really cool systems you can make with them and see your community response, it's super cool. So I'll always be here on YouTube to make those. So if you wanna continue being in the loop for those future builds, then click the subscribe button as well as the bell notification button if you're feeling a little bit generous. And if you like this video, then of course, give it a like because the YouTube algorithm is not good right now. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and this is the Schedule Channel.